I've worn my sunglasses. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the January 15th 2020 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. If we could all first rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Karen Chu? Here. James Hewitt? Present. Melinda Torrance? Here. Rudy Karen? Here. David Bork? Here. Chip Howe? Here. And Jennifer Waters is absent. All right. Thank you. Welcome and good evening. Um, this is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into an executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all the exhibits that are being presented tonight. Please notify the chairperson if you are unable to hear or to see the proceedings. The board will work from a prepared agenda and will take upon tonight's items in the following order. We have approval of minutes and findings of facts from last month. And we have one appeal for a practical difficulty variance for 34 Evergreen Farm Road. In each appeal instance, the burden <coughs> is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria or provisions of the applicable appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all the testimony has been heard, the chairman will close the record and the board will adopt finding of facts for each criteria and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet the criteria. It is important to note that if any of the appeal or special exception criteria have not been met, the, more, the board must deny the appeal or the application. In many cases, the applicant or the landowner may have a personal problem which prompted the appeal and if there is in the request for the variance, please understand that this is not a legally relevant to the appeal and no matter how sympathetic the board may be to the applicant's situation. After the board votes on the merits of each criteria, a motion may be made to approve the appeal and if there is a second, discussion will follow. The board will then state the conclusions of law based on the findings of fact to support a decision on the motion. A general vote will then take on the appeal. If the majority of the voting members present vote in the affirmative, the appeal is approved. And if the majority of the voting members vote in the negative, the appeal is denied. The board's decision stands as the date of the vote was taken, regardless of the approval of the final written decision. And generally speaking, appeals from the adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court within 45 days of the today's decision. And again, we remind everyone that this is a public proceeding and you have the right to hear and see everything that is happening tonight. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name and address or affiliation and all both board members and interested parties are asked to direct their questions through the chair. So first we have the approval of the minutes from the December 11th, 2019 meeting. Did everyone get a chance to review those? Yes. yes. Did anyone have any questions or concerns? No questions. No questions. Motion, motion to approve. Motion to, the, to approve the meeting minutes as written. Yes, second. All in favor? Okay. We have the written decision for appeal number 2675, limited reduction of yard size for 4 Ocean Ave. Did everyone get a chance to review that? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Any additions? Questions? No motion? Motion to, appeal, uh, to <laughs> approve appeal number 2675 as written. And seconded. All in favor? That's approved. Um, thank you. We have the draft decision for 2676, which is a special exception appeal for the home occupation at 2 Moxie Way. Did anyone have any questions or concerns or edits? None. No concern. Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve appeal number 2676, draft written decisions as presented. Second. All in favor? And then we 
have the decision for appeal number 2677, which is a reduction, <coughs> limited reduction of yard size for the 8 Robinson Road. I have a motion. Edits. Move to approve the draft decision for appeal number 2677 as presented. Second. All in favor? All right. One appeal tonight, which is a practical difficulty variance appeal for 34 Evergreen Farms Road. I will ask Mr. Longstaff from the town to do a quick introduction first. Certainly, Madam Chair, the appeal number 2678 is practical difficulty variance appeal uh, by Eric Johnson, 34 Evergreen Farm Road. Uh, the applicant is seeking a practical difficulty variance in order to place a new 8 by 10 shed in the back corner of the parcel. That would be the north northeastern corner of the parcel. Um, due to the location of the dwelling, um, the way it was placed on the lot, it's uh, so far to the rear of the property that the backyard area is very limited. So this leaves a lot of front yard area on the property, but very little backyard. So the uh, the appellant is before you to uh, ask relief from that 15-foot um, rear and side line setback. Um, obviously, the board must determine um, uh, if there is uh, no feasible alternative for placing the small shed somewhere else on the lot, as well as the other standards that need to, to be addressed under Section 5B6. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, I don't know if you want to take the podium and if you want to give any more information or we can dive right into the application. Certainly, uh, in, in generally, what format do you like to see? I can I mean, a narrative or? Yep, I mean, I think Mr. Longstaff just kind of told us what you're looking for. I didn't know if you wanted to add to it or basically what we're going to do now is go through the criteria and you can just flat out read in the answers that you provided to us this evening or just kind of go as you like. Yeah, if you guys have all had a chance to review it, if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to add. Okay, yep, so I'll go through their criteria now and I'll read them and then you can give the answers. Certainly, I, I don't have a physical copy of what I provided already. Okay. Uh, so, be by memory, maybe not verbatim to what I would like to have. Would you like to have a copy of your uh, site? Yeah. 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 Pretty straightforward. So what we'll do now is just go through the criteria, okay? So number one is the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general condition in, in the neighborhood. As uh, well articulated by Mr. Longstaff, the nature of the backyard is such that there's a very limited space in which uh, compliance with the, the, uh, the zoning requirements would allow a shed to be placed. It would uh, severely limit the use of the backyard, which uh, currently is used by our three dogs and uh, little ones to play with, play in. Um, anywhere other than the place we I requested to place the shed would, uh, in my opinion, uh, damage the, the value of the home uh, to, to further divide the, the um, yard uh, as it is would just, uh, it would not have a appealing effect on if you can try to talk into the microphone, just for the record. Am I not? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure how much it picks it up. To be honest. Roger. Um, and there's also some brush and trees that have to be removed. Um, if there's any other place other than uh, where I've requested. Okay. Uh, you may ask why not the front yard then? Uh, part of the ordinance, uh, or part of the variance requirements, stipulates that the. Uh, What's the wording here? That's one Does of the not other. have an unreasonable adverse effect on the natural environment or um, unduly change the, the neighborhood. Um, having it in, in the front yard uh, in full view of passing traffic uh, would, would, would alter the characteristics of the neighborhood to an extent that uh, I think would be unreasonable. Okay. Uh, the backyard is truly the only place to have it that would have um, 
as limited uh, a change to that, that, that neighborhood characteristic. All right, I think that's a little bit in number two, which is number two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an undesirable detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the abutting properties. Yes, yeah. Um, in addition to that, I would add that I, I sought the, the, the opinions of all my, uh, my abutters. Uh, I, asked, I pointed out uh, where it was going to go and showed them plans for what was being put in. Uh, none of them had any concern of any negative impact on their property or property values and um, stated that they were fully on board uh, with no concerns. Uh, and again, um, the reason or part of the reason to place it where we've asked to place it is that it's the only reasonable place to put it to one, not have an undue change to the characters of the neighborhood and two. Uh, not unduly uh, hinder my property value by further subdividing that narrow strip of backyard that we have. Do other properties in your neighborhood sort of have that same sort of backyard or? They do. Sort of um, in fact, uh, things 36, our, our direct uh, abutter to the right, has a very similar um, property layout, as you can tell, um, a little bit more room um, but even so they, they have a shed out back there um, uh, what was my point they, they also have a shed out back there mm -hmm. uh, so adding one to our backyard would not unduly change the uh, the immediate area right okay number three the practical difficulty is not the result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner no, it's just where the house is placed, and unless you count that as uh, part of that uh, definition, uh, the problem created is, is just the fact of where the house sits and putting a shed in the front yard is, is unfeasible. Right. Number four, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Yeah, I, I would say not. Uh, it was raised in the opinion in the comments uh, that I was provided prior to coming here that uh, an alternative may be seeking a rental uh, storage facility somewhere off-site. It's not reasonable in this uh, circumstance. The purpose for the shed is to um, clear out the garage uh, for greater mobility. Uh, the items we're looking to move are a uh, for an example, uh, lawn mower, snow blower, and our generator, as well as lawn uh, equipment and tools. Uh, storing those off-site is, is not a reasonable alternative. Right. Number five, the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly in conformance with surrounding properties. I don't know if I can claim it will bring us more nearly into conformance. Uh, but I can certainly claim that it won't alter uh, any other conformity to the neighborhood. As I've stated, uh, our neighbors have no issue. They don't, only one would be able to see it from their property uh, due right. to where it would lay. Um, and from the road, you wouldn't be able to see it at all. Uh, it's going to be painted uh, similar to the house and in, in, in no manner would it be uh, shocking to anybody's conscience who's driving down the street. And so my understanding of kind of this development here is that the lots are all kind of similar and facing sort of the same sort of issues with the setbacks and things like that. I would agree with that statement. And um, you're saying that other properties around you have sheds? I gotta put my glasses on at this point. Yes, yes, I'm aware of a few um, offhand. And they are in the front, and they all are in their backyard, is what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Okay. Number six, the granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. The place where we have it selected for the site uh, is clear of brush and trees uh, already. Um, it would require no removal of any uh, foil foliage uh, at all. It's clear and can readily accept the structure that we proposed. Anywhere else would uh, one 
unfairly impact my backyard. Uh, significant percentage of the usable backyard would be taken up by the shed, uh, losing that, that play area and um, place where my, my four-legged friends like to, to frolic. Um, the only other place would uh, require the removal of uh, at least one large tree and several uh, medium-sized trees. I'm not sure if these photos really do that justice right there. That larger tree, uh, which would be, I can't take that down. That, that would incur great cost to me to have an uh, arborist uh, come and remove that professionally for me. And the proper, uh, number seven, the property is not located within a shoreland area? No, not that I'm aware of, unless uh, we're factoring climate change. Okay. Does the board have any questions at this time? Was there an eighth on the new application, even though I didn't fill that one out, it was brought to my attention that there was a new form? Just want to make sure that I'm uh, covering all my T's and I's. Yep. So under the practical difficulty variance, one of the other criteria that we have to consider is that under a practical difficulty where a case where the strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the which the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude the use of the property for which a permit which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and also would result in a significant economic injury to the applicant. Yes, uh, as far as I know, and I, I fully admit I am not an expert on the ordinances, the R4 zone does not <clears throat> or does allow me to have a small storage shed on my property. There's nothing I've read in the literature that would suggest to me otherwise. Um, and as my, and as previously stated, the way the house sits on the lot, um, if we're reading the uh, zoning ordinance strictly, there is no place on the lot to reasonably place that structure for which I'm uh, allowed to, to place on my property. The front lot yard, again, it's not reasonable. It would be completely viewable to passing traffic and would change the character of the neighborhood. In the back lot, anywhere other than where the site we propose would unduly um, limit the use of my, my limited, already limited backyard. Uh, economic injury, uh, the property I need to remove from the garage is, is not aesthetic, it's not organizational, it's a need. Uh, we have an uh, 85-year-old great grandmother uh, who co-owns the resident with us who suffered a um, stroke recently. She's already fallen down the stairs uh, in the garage once trying to navigate um, the, uh, the clutter that combining our two households has created. Um, and as a result, we had to widen and um, create a staircase with uh, a much less grade to it to access the vehicles in the garage. As, as greater footprint limited the space uh, usable in the garage. Uh, that can't continue, uh, so a solution needs to be, uh, we had to come up with a solution. Um, mine was a storage shed to remove most of the, the material that we use on a seasonal basis. Um, or daily basis. Uh, other, other than that, as I've mentioned before, an off-site storage um, area is just not going to flip the bill because of the, the nature of the things that need to be removed for the free use of our garage. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions? Mr. Karen? Uh, excuse me, I do have a question. Yes. With regard to the size of the proposed shed, 8 by 10 um, has there been any thought to other configurations uh, or other size sheds? Uh, we settled on 8x10. It, it makes most, the most sense for our needs and what we're looking to do. Um, as far as a smaller shed, uh, would, the same issues would, would exist. Uh, the, the yard, no matter how small this shed was, um, would still be subdivided. Uh, see, I would have to move the swing set. Uh, it, would, it would almost limit the use, free use of the yard by half, no matter how small the structure was. Other configurations are, are not plausible in that we can't, we have to build, a, they, they have certain shells. Of, I, I can't build a shed, I'm not that handy, so I have to seek somebody else to do it for me. And they, they offer only a limited number of uh, configurations. Uh, this one makes the most sense for us, and uh, anything smaller wouldn't 
a do what we needed to do and honestly wouldn't wouldn't have a lessened impact on the for use of my my backyard understood as a follow up you did mention that there are existing foliage and trees and brush in the backyard not where it's currently proposed but elsewhere just to confirm to the far right at the opposite corner of the backyard by the dog leg is there in fact a tree there the dog leg pardon me Brian if you could go back to that shaded portion with blue do you want photos or do you want this one the grid the graphic where is it just back here next to that is that a dog leg so certainly there is the hashed black is where the ordinance would allow me or is the boundary of where the ordinance would allow me to build an 8 by 10 would not fit right next to that door right there in addition to that that has a that's where one of our down spouts is and putting a structure there would hamper my my roof's ability to drain the water we already have significant drainage issues and moving that is not is not something that's feasible at this moment thank you very much any other questions yes sure as I'm looking at the back of the house there are two protrusions could you explain what each of them is certainly the the one on the left is a what you described that a breakfast nook it's it's a protrusion from the building we have a small dining table in there it's an enclosed part of the home not not something that can be moved the other one is the the egress from our basement area also enclosed part of the main structure not not something that can be moved so that's a bulkhead you're saying it's not a bulkhead it's a freestanding door with a set of stairs down into the basement all right so all right the the equipment that you're talking about storing is did you have a basement then it is a finished basement a living area okay it's a finished basement okay so if none of the basement would be suitable for storage it would not be the only area in the basement that is for storage is filled with storage we combined our two households and again the equipment we're talking about is stuff that needs to be used on a almost daily basis depending on the season and could you please explain again why you couldn't put the shed somewhere in between those two protrusions or some kind of a shed not necessarily an 8 by 10 like that but perhaps one that faces out certainly so it was a slope roof or something like that a structure could be fit there could fit there but again my backyard is fairly limited and to put something in there would effectively half the the usable backyard area no I'm talking about an 8 by 10 against the house and if I'm looking at this if I'm looking at this right here could you tell me is the scale here each each square is five feet by five feet is that your scale I think I made a notation no it's not on here that's why I'm asking my main concern is that placing a shed in that area would have an adverse effect on my property's value in the backyard yes sir it's it's a very it's a good backyard which sees a lot of use if I place a structure in it that use is hampered so what you're saying is that you're proposing to put a shed in the corner as opposed to you know right up to the house and there's a difference in the effect it would have on the worth of your home correct as my wife's pointing out one the windows would be obstructed by the structure okay and two up is that window from the ground pardon me how high up is that window from the ground is that a bathroom window you can see the uh the window right there in the bedroom window and then there's three patio door thing that opens up and then next to it is where the exhausts are from the our uh hose water spigot is also located right there as well okay so you have utilities i do along that wall 
All right, so I'm, I'm still having a hard time because obviously you could fit a shed in that area. You could, as okay, I maybe mm -hmm. leaving a little bit I've of space. Stated. You know, if I'm looking at your scale properly, you know, it, look, it appears that you've got 15 feet from the house to the setback. Mm -hmm. There are windows there. I know, <clears> but the shed could be put. It could be put somewhere in that area. Without really certainly, I'm not anything. debating the fact that it could be placed there. The question yeah, is whether it would unduly yeah. hamper the, the effective value of my home. If I'm looking at a, uh, a residence to raise my two children and I see a backyard that has a shed so close to the wall that I have to sidestep to the water fountain and blocks the light coming into the, my uh, in, you know, bedroom window, I might look at the next one on my list. Uh, one further question, okay, one final question for me. Uh, I see there is a deck. Mm -hmm. uh, did you install that? The deck on the left portion of the rear of the house was installed by us. The patio uh, in the, between the two protrusions was placed there um, prior to okay. our ownership. So what, I'm, what you're saying then is the, on the side of the house right here? Yes. You put that in? I did. Okay. No, we did not. All right, somebody else put that in? My grandmother, if there was a thing there before, yeah. and then my grandmother refinished it to look to the drainage, to allow better drainage piping to go underneath it. It yeah. was just a little plain place, basically down so that there's no piping down there. No, that is, from what I can see from your scale, that falls within the uh, setback. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? It would, again, if I were to place it there, uh, trees and limbs would have I'm to I'm not saying, moved. I'm not talking about placing the shed there. I'm talking about the fact there's a deck there. And I just wanted to find out how that deck happened, who put it in. So you're saying that you folks did put it in, your family put that was there. That I wasn't involved, my wife. Was that her. permitted? I have no idea, my grandmother. I, I wouldn't call it a deck, I don't know. It was a your area that was put in. I have no idea. Do you remember? Okay. I don't. Ha I have no further questions. Thank you. So one question, actually, I have, Madam Chair, if I may. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the drainage issues that you're having on your property? Yes. Yeah, so uh, to the rear of our property, beyond our property line, is a bit of a depression uh, that collects a significant amount of water, um, and it uh, drains through the rear right corner of the property, mm -hmm. down between the uh, down along the boundary of my home and 36. Um, that's exasperated by uh, the rainwater off our roof. Uh, we've had uh, leaking issues in the basement in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, directly behind you, who's that? Um, that uh, sizable property with the uh, all the home. the nursing home. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Those are uh, my questions that I have. Ms. Torres, did you? Um, no, so I, I'm kind of curious too. You mentioned that this this area, the deck that um, we were talking about before, is mm -hmm. that actually deck or is that just dirt? Is it the the, the place where I mark deck is about um, two to three inches off the ground, and it's that uh, faux wood uh, deck. It's it's very the minor. Stuff, yeah deck but I'd call it a deck yeah okay all right um, and so I don't know, I'm still think I'm still giving a lot of thought to some of this because I'm I'm struggling a bit with with the as a real estate broker I have a really hard issue with the justification that it, it compromises your property value to, okay. to, to put a shed in that area um, because basically what you lose in activity area by putting the shed in the building envelope is made up for by where your shed is going to be located on here. You know, you I'm still sorry, have, can you repeat that comment? So you still have, you've got a building envelope, mm -hmm. but beyond the building envelope, you still have additional yard. 
Right. And so where you're proposing to put the, the shed, you know, it doesn't change the size of your yard. It just changes the location of the shed. So if you put a shed in the corner, then you can still put a volleyball net up or still do other things. If you put a shed here, then you're very limited on this side and you're very limited on this side. And where the trees are located, there's a natural spot that doesn't have any trees. Mm -hmm. That fits that spot. Okay. Do we have any other further questions? I think we're yeah, ready to I, yeah, I, I, um, open this up to the public. No. Yeah. Any other questions? No? No. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to open it up to the public now. I don't know if we received any letters or phone calls. Only the one that was included in the Right, yeah. So my understanding was we did receive a letter within the application that was signed by some of the neighbors supporting it. Um, so that's in there. It's in the record. And we don't need to read it unless you feel like I need to. If I may add an additional comment, if um, it's allowed. What's that? Uh, I wasn't able to get uh, a signed letter from my other neighbors, okay. but they expressed the desire to. Yep. It's just a matter of timing. Okay. If, yep. No, I understand that. We have a short window there sometimes. Thank Madam, you. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I'll, say I'll just note for the record that the four butters who did sign it are not opposed to the shed. It's actually just two place. people at 36. If you oh, right, yeah. Right. Four sets three. of names, but two. two. It's just 36 yeah. evergreen. Folks. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, I do have one one further question. All right, let me close. Can we, or could we reopen you, you, you can. Um, we open the public hearing. Is there any more? Um, it doesn't seem like this. We can close it. Mm -hmm. And then they can ask their question. Okay. It's public. Here. The discussion happens after that. Yeah. So, if anybody else? No? Okay. Close the public hearing and then we can discuss. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Close the public hearing. She has another question for the applicant. Oh. Okay. It, it so actually can come up through now that we've closed the public hearing, you can allow that. Okay. You just need okay. to finish that. <laughs> okay, except for he's gone. <laughs> we, had one more, we had one more question. Okay. I can do my best. Okay. Go ahead. Um, is is the shed intended to be a permanent structure, or is it going to be temporary? I noticed that you put in here that it was going to be set on an, a non-permanent foundation or a movable foundation. I mean, foundation. it's not like it's going to be it's going to be permanent for now. I mean, it's not to say it's someday it couldn't be taken down, but at this point, I wouldn't. The reason we went this way was because it is a sturdier shed, and it does conform to the look of the neighborhood. It could match, you know, paint of the house. It would stay looking conformed with the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, so it would have the exact same color as our house, the exact same roof as our house, so it would all look complete. So that again, keeping in the aesthetics of the neighborhood, that you would almost look at it and say it's just part of it. So. Yeah, no, my only, the only reason I had that question is that it's, it specifically says in, you know, in your answer to number six that it would be placed on a low non-permanent foundation. Mm -hmm. So I'm just questioning whether you're intending to need this shed indefinitely or whether this is yes, a temporary. Yes, I intend on it to be there okay. indefinitely as far as I can see it. Okay. I uh, mentioned that statement only because uh, some of my coworkers in other localities, but um, uh, their own ordinance have a separate, uh, there are separate things controlling whether it's a permanent foundation uh, to a floating non-permanent foundation. Okay. That was it. That was it. Okay. Okay. All right. With that, we're now going to do our findings of facts. So I'll go through the criteria. Number one, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general condition in the neighborhood. Mr. Karen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, do not have much to add to this one, and I will pass at this time. Okay. Um, you know, it, it has to do really with where the house was placed on the lot and not so much the unique circumstances of the property, I think. Um, and I think that's all the only comment I really have. I sort of feel like what I was hearing was it is the general condition of the neighborhood that this is what the lots are like. 
I, I agree. I mean, if you look at there, Madam Chair, and, every, and all members of the board, a lot of the houses are set back far from the road mm -hmm. um, in such a way that you know, it may preclude them to having any kind of structure in their backyards at all, especially across the street as Mr. Longstaff is cruising through the neighborhood. Um, one thing I, I, I wanted to note is, uh, um, again, the property is developed in such a way that the houses are back that far from the road, purposefully, most likely, to maximize the front, the front yard. Um, there are also, it seems to be that the other properties in that area as well are designed in a similar way. Uh, I would agree. It's uh, something that's very characteristic of uh, the, the entire neighborhood. The, lo the homes are set back on the property like this. So, so I think that, uh, going back to, is, is the need for the variance due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. I think we have to say that this is the general condition in the neighborhood. Yes. Yes. And there's nothing unique really about it. Correct. True. Uh, all in favor? No. Anyone else? Any other comments, findings of facts? Um, I mean, some of the properties here have sheds. As they've stated, I mean, I'm kind of going into number two a little bit, but I'll say that other shed, there are other properties in a neighborhood who have sheds. Um, this particular property with the setbacks, they're just in a bad, they're, they're in a corner. If you look at the southeastern corner, um, they're pretty tucked in there, and not a lot of the other properties in that area have that sort of restriction. I think also if just to add, by moving the shed possibly up closer to the house, you, they're already having some drainage issues. And that could add to that as well um, by having additional roof space and, and runoff. Um, seems as if it's pretty much hidden in the back corner. I think it makes sense. Uh, it's all wooded behind with, what, what was the back, back there, the? Nursing home. Nursing home. Um, so it isn't sitting in someone else's backyard. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say it's very unique to, or it's conducive to the entire uh, neighborhood. struggling with this one. I'm afraid to put it to a vote. Um, You're going to go more through all of them. Yeah. Manager. Well, no, I mean, yeah. just all in favor of one being met. Right. Okay. That's where you are at. All in favor of one being met. It's two. Opposed. Okay. Number two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonable detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the abutting properties. Uh, Ms. Torrens, you want to start with that? So this is, this is part of why I do kind of have an issue with this location of the shed, is that we have property owners on either side right now that are fine with the shed being placed in that spot, but should those property owners decide to sell their property and then you know, some the next owners might have a problem with this, and, and we have kind of a, I, I think setbacks are, for, are, are, are in place for a reason, um, and unless there's a really, really good reason to ignore them or override them, um, I, I, you know, I'd love to, to say that I, we could, I would love to be in favor of letting them have their shed, but I, I don't see it in that spot for, um, because I do believe there might be some unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of abutting properties in the long run. Mr. Um, I do not see any issues with the variance. 
producing an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. I think where it's proposed is well thought out and intentional, but I have to agree with uh, Ms. Torrance in that the setbacks are uh, enforced and placed with uh, the intentions of the community, uh, neighbors, um, beyond just the present owners of the property. Looking at the question, will it not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood? I would say no, uh, and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the budding properties. I would also say no, um, in, in that it, they're not putting it on a poured foundation. They can be relocated or removed at any given time. Um, they indicated that they're going to be painting the shed same sort of color palette as the house. Other neighbors have sheds in their backyards. Um, I don't really see a big issue with this one. I do have a concern about the location within the setback. Uh, I think that uh, you may, while there may be sheds in other neighbors' properties, uh, assuming they are within the setbacks and not in violation of our ordinances, uh, I think this could definitely negatively impact the market value of uh, nearby abutting properties. And at some point in the future, if an abutting property were to be sold, I think that could uh, you know, negatively impact, impact the values. So I have a concern about this one. I have nothing to add on this one. Okay. I mean, the proposed location is surrounded by standing trees and is not very visible. So I don't think it will have a big visual impact. Um, you have a letter of support coming from the neighbors. Madam Chair, I have a question for the board um, because we have some folks that are knowledgeable in real estate. Do you feel that the location that's proposed would be any more detrimental to property values, either the, 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 the property value of the appellant or the neighboring properties? Uh, would it have any more detrimental effect where it's being proposed than it would if they created a space in the front yard meeting the 30-foot front setback and 15-foot front setback, let's say, to the, the right-hand side of the property closer to the road and then shielded it with landscaping and you know, some shrubbery and whatnot, where it's such a cute little gray, neat-looking shed. Would that have a detrimental effect on neighboring property values or this property? I don't believe it would have a detrimental effect if it were placed in the front yard. We have a lot of applicants for variances that come and they make statements, but there's no proof. And so I was mm -hmm. just kind of looking to see what the no, I mean, was. We, we see it frequently in, in terms of people putting garages in front yards because they have no other place to put a garage. Um, and, you know, there's... They, they're obviously, they covet the, the ability to use the backyard for their playground for right. their kids and their dogs, and, and I get that. The front yard is essentially not used for anything but mowing lawn. Right. And so There's that's, space there, and that's all I'm trying to, I'm that's, trying to bring up. So. Well, and that's the other thing that I, that I go back to, too, is that, you know, the one of the remarks about being able to put up a, you know, volleyball net or something like that, well, what's, what's bad about doing that in the front yard? There is a grade. Yeah, what was but the... But the shed doesn't care if there's a grade there. No, it doesn't. No, in fact, that's... Yeah. I mean, I think you could... I think a shed could be done, especially just with what you've described, in, a, in an attractive... I know. Visible. I'm trying to pass, but we can't make any comment. Uh, we're all speaking about opinion here. Yep, this is actually closed now, so yeah. we're going to do... We're our, gonna I'm really there. sorry. We're just... We have to do our finding of fact. Yep. Um, I don't know if anyone, anyone had any more additions, but we are going to vote on number two. All in favor of number two being met. Two. That's four. Those against. Okay. Number three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. So my understanding is that the it was not the original owner, and then they did not place the property there, the structure there. The stories. Um, no, I mean I don't. I don't believe it's an, anything that they've 
created for, uh, you know, the hardship is anything they've created for themselves. Uh, I think it's the nature of how the how the neighborhood was developed and um, and you know I, I've had a property like this before and, and I totally understand the situation. I uh, and it is hard when you you didn't didn't do it yourself. Um, that's I think I don't know. That's about all I have to say, really. Mr. Karen? I agree that the difficulty is not an action taken by the applicant or the prior owner. Uh, once again, it's how it's on the site. Um, nothing more than that. I agree. I mean, the current owner did not build or place the house on the property. The end. Mm -hmm. Agreed. The entire neighborhood appears to have been developed this way. Mm -hmm. All in favor of three being met. Four, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Ms. Torrance, <laughs> you want to do just yes or no? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I believe that there is a feasible alternative. Um, so. I'm sorry, no, I can elaborate. No, no, that's, I think that's really all I need to yeah. say. Yeah. Um, Mr. Karen. <clears throat> shared by the impellent this evening. While it's not uh, advantageous or preferred, there are other opportunities on the existing site within the existing footprint that are possible. Yeah, um, uh, there, there are locations where you can place it on the front of the property and covered by greenery and shrubbery and so on. Obviously, it's not ideal, uh, but looking at the strict interpretation of the questions in front of us, um, I have to disagree with this. Uh, in addition to the options uh, in the front of the house, uh, which would require landscaping, obviously, to, to you know, shelter it or fencing, for that matter, that could be another possibility. I still believe there are possibilities in the rear of the house, especially if you put it on a gravel foundation, mm -hmm. which is not permanent, and that would help with drainage. Yep. So mm -hmm. it, it, there are options back there in the back, within the setback area. Right. You know, the practical difficulty variance appeals are very difficult, and some of the applicants that come before us will specifically to kind of discredit this other feasible alternative, and they will bring hard evidence. You know, it's very hard for me to not say, oh, why can't they just put a little storage unit on the back of their house under their windows? Why can't they put it in the front? In our mind, those answers haven't been answered, and there are feasible alternatives. So all in favor of four being met. And those opposed? <coughs> Number five, the granting of the variance will, br will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Am I starting again? Yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, I believe, unfortunately, I believe that the applicant's property is already in conformance with surrounding properties, and so there is no real room for bringing it more into conformance. I agree with Ms. Torrance that this would not bring it into a greater conformance with the surrounding properties. Um, however, there are other properties that are nearby that do have sheds. Um, they clearly said that um, they can't store their, their these pieces of equipment inside the home because the basement is finished. Um, you know, you can't necessarily put a, a generator or a lawnmower or a snowblower that's filled with gasoline and oil into a finished basement, especially with, with kids running around. Um, granting this would bring it more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties because everybody has a shed and everybody stores equipment like this in sheds to keep them out of their house. Uh, I, I would uh, also uh, uh, take issue by, by stating that by placing a shed within a setback area, that's not within, in conformance with surrounding properties whatsoever. Uh, you know, if other properties in the area have sheds, they have to be within the setbacks. Uh, so, no, this would make it an exception to the other homes on the uh, property which have sheds. I think I have to agree that it would, it would be an exception to the others. I agree with you. All in favor of five being met. Those opposed? Number six, the granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Ms. 
Um, on the natural environment, no, I don't think that the, the granting of, the, of a variance would have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. My bigger concern is that when you put a, a shed in the setback on one property, then what happens if you've got a shed in the setback on the other property? Now you have building to building. And that's exactly what setbacks are meant to avoid. I agree with that. I do not think the variance would have an unreasonable effect on the environment. Um, and it's what's proposed seems very reasonable and natural. I agree. I, I think it's reasonable to apply for this. Um, the, the applicant has stated that removal of trees would be necessary to try to place the shed anywhere else in the backyard where without additional study or surveying that could pose a detrimental effect on the environment back there um, by not studying that. So he's just trying, they're just trying to find a feasible location in their backyard out of sight. Uh, no further comments. No comments. And they were also proposing to do a non-permanent um, foundation, which would be, would be not adverse. Uh, all in favor of six being met. Number seven, the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland area. Okay. And then we have eight. Oh yeah, all in favor of it, eight, seven, sorry, yes. It's not the shoreland zone. It's not the shoreland zone. And then we have the practical difficulty. The strict, number eight, the strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and also would result in significant economic injury to the applicant. Well, I just, I don't believe that there's any significant economic injury to the applicant and I don't believe that there's any um, limitation on use of the property as it was intended or as is typical of the, the neighborhood. Um, I understand this is not, you know, uh, trying to put it within the building envelope is not desirable, but is there economic injury? No. Is there a limited use? I don't believe so. I believe that without the shed that they'll still be able to use the property as intended and um, without injury. Correct. And my understanding is one of the issues here is they're trying to combine two households into one. Um, if that's correct. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mr. Um, I'll add that um, by not allowing them to place it here, if they were to put it in the front, there would be additional costs associated with setting that in place correctly on, on the slope, as well as additional money to put greenery bushes, trees, brush around it. Um, so that's my opinion on number eight. Uh, my interpretation would be that um, the additional cost of putting it in the front would not be significant. You know, these are relatively minor uh, extras. And there are options for putting it in the back, which are not going to cost uh, very much more at all, you know, just to deal with the drainage issue. Within the, within the setbacks, and that's very easy to do. I'm getting on the net. Okay. All in favor of eight being out. One. One. Those opposed. Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Appeal number 2678 is presented. Seconded. All in favor? Those opposed? Sorry. Uh, no, Mr. Bork, I'm gonna, uh, no, no, I'm going to ask you. Oh, no, I, I don't want to. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, no, it's okay. I just. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, guys. Tonight. Um, do we have any? 
other agenda items or issues for to address? I don't think so. Um, next month, I think we're back on our regular night, so thank you for changing your schedules mm -hmm. to accommodate uh, okay. town council. Yep. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Um, I want to add one quick comment, if I may. One quick comment, if I may. So, yeah, just to keep in mind as we're going through these applications, as we're going through these, a these applications, like question by question, be careful not to bleed other, like question, like reading ahead into like question six when we're on question one. You know, focusing our efforts on identifying each question and answering just one question at a time specifically just what's written on the application before we sort of jump ahead, proceed to the next one, keeps well, everything. And I think that's a good point because sometimes also the applicant will start leading into other questions and as much as you want to address what they're saying and I wanted to right at the beginning, you have to hold it till we get to that criteria. That's a really good note, Mr. Hebert. Thank I agree. You. I've, I've been guilty of that. So it is, no, it's yeah. so hard because you're like, you're saying what I want to talk about, but it's not the right criteria. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and it's really hard because we yeah. will get there and it's important to wait and try to address it under that criteria so we can all have the turn to address that stuff. Right. The, the time and place for all the items on the application are there purposefully, so yeah. just when it gets to your point to speak, just speak to the merits of that particular question on the application only before you jump to the next one. Because, I mean, we're all going to be able to, everyone's going to have a chance to say something about everything here. Yeah. So it just, also helps us as we're forming up, right. sort of firming the up the conclusions of law, the findings of fact and yeah. conclusions to keep them nice and categorical. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I mean, just from this, the, the point of view from staff who are trying to capture all these findings of fact, if we're all over the place talking about different questions, then that yeah, doesn't exactly. it put there's a lar larger onerous on, on staff. So that's all I got. Yes, no, thank you. That was good. Good feedback. I like that. A motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.